A room measurement is a great way of understanding the acoustic reality of your space. And with the help of this guide, a free piece of software and an inexpensive measurement microphone, you can do it too. But why measure your room in the first place? Here are two things a measurement will do for you. First, being able to see a visual representation of what you are hearing puts things into perspective. Our hearing can become accustomed to any listening situation and you can't really trust your ears anymore when it comes to judging either your room or your speakers. Second, it helps identifying critical acoustic issues so we can target them purposefully with treatment. Especially decay times are really difficult to judge by ear and having an acoustic measurement of your space really helps us tailor an acoustic solution exactly to your needs. First, we need to choose the right microphone for the job. Measurement microphones capture sound omnidirectionally and usually come with a dedicated calibration file to create a perfectly flat frequency response when applied. The Mini DSP You Make One already comes with a built-in USB sound card to plug directly into your computer. While ordinary measurement microphones like the Dayton Audio EMM6 feature an XLR connector and require an external audio interface. As for software, we are using RoomEQ Wizard, or REW, a free, powerful software capable of measuring and analyzing your room and loudspeakers. To download REW, go to roomeqwizard.com and choose the version that suits your operating system. After the download is finished, simply proceed with the installation. Before we get started, we need to set it up correctly. Connect your mini DSP Yumic one or your sound card to your computer. Now open REW and click on Preferences. At the top, we can choose from the connected input and output devices. Select the measurement microphone or the correlating input on your sound card as the input. And select your main speakers as the output. Below you find a setting called Sweep Level. This sets the output level for the test tones. Minus 12 dB is a good starting point here. You want to set up the measurement microphone on a stand at the listening position and adjust it for ear height. If you are using an USB mic, simply connect it to your computer. In case you have an XLR mic, connect it to your sound card and make sure to turn on phantom power, as those are usually condenser mics. Now we need to set the levels. To do so, open the SPL meter, the generator and the levels meter. Set the generator to white noise at minus 12 dBFS and click play. Just make sure to turn down your speakers in advance. Now slowly turn up your speakers until you read about 76 dBA at the SPL meter. Also make sure the input signal is not clipping on the levels meter. Levels around minus 12 dBFS are considered optimal. Close the SPL meter, generator and levels meter again and click on measure at the top left corner to open the measurement window. We want to measure SPL and use a sweep length of either 256 or 128K with one repetition. Set the range to 20 to 20,000 Hz and the levels to minus 12 dBFS again. As for the output, select either L or R. To avoid interference between both channels, we want to measure each speaker separately. Click on Start to begin the measurement. After you hear the sign sweep, a graph will appear in the SPL tab of the main window. To understand the measurement, we are looking at the following three windows. SPL, waterfall and spectrogram. Each plot tells us something different about the room. SPL plots the sand pressure level over the frequency. This shows which frequencies are over or under pronounced at the listening position. At first it looks foreign, which is why we want to apply what is called active smoothing in the graphs menu. 1 over 6 smoothing is usually the best visual representation of what we hear. The SPL tab also allows you to view the phase response in the same window. Simply check mark phase at the bottom. To zoom in on specific sections, you can use the plus and minus button on each axis. To compare multiple measurements or do some A-B testing, you can use the All SPL tab. At the bottom, check mark the measurements you would like to compare. More important than the SPL response might be to see how sound behaves over time. Both the waterfall and spectrogram plot decay times over frequency and help us identify room modes and resonances. 
Click on the waterfall tab and then on Generate to create a waterfall plot for the selected measurement. Usually we want to access the range between 20 and 300 Hz with a range of 60 dB. Use the limits control and enter 20 and 300 for the left and right limit. Now we just need to adjust the third axis by clicking Control and entering 300 for the window and 500 for the time range. The spectrogram is a little bit easier to view because it's basically a representation of the waterfall view from above. Click on the spectrogram tab and then on generate to generate the plot. The colors now represent the SPL levels, while the axes plot the decay times over the frequency which allows for a very quick assessment of room modes and general decay times across the entire spectrum. At GIK, we can take those measurements and offer an in-depth analysis of your room, as well as recommend the best treatment solution based on the actual test data. To share the measurements with one of our advisors, make sure you choose a meaningful name for each sweep. Now click on Save All, enter any notes you like, or skip by clicking OK. Name the file, click on save, and your measurements are ready to be sent off. Let us know in the comments below if you have any further questions about REW or the optimal treatment strategy for your room. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational videos and follow the link below to submit your free acoustic advice form to get the very best sound for your space. <laughs>